Hello, my name is Matias Cavodi. I'd like to welcome guys to my channel. Today we're going to talk about the second part of the original Sin crossover. That it's a fantastic read before I spoil the hell out of it. It's worth the read. And we're going to cover issues five through eight. So we start off with like the secret origins of uh, Nick, Nick. I was going to say Nicolas Cage, Nick Fury, sorry. <laughs> and the thing is, they sort of retcon his past. So after his time in the Howling Commandos, but before he was part of S.H.I.E.L.D., Nick Fury was working in, in, within the intelligence community. He had to deal with the situation with an alien invasion in one small town in, in middle America. There he's encou he encounters this guy with this, all this high-tech te technology, taking down these aliens, fighting to the death. He's able to stop the alien invasion, and in his dying words, he sort of explains what he does and what's his function in the world. That he's part of an organization that's like the first line of defense of Earth against aliens, uh, monsters, demons, so on, anything that it's going to menace the planet on on a world scale. And um, actually, I've read this two times. It doesn't mention the name of the organization. It's like an organization that predates uh, Shield that for the life of me, I can't remember the name. Maybe it's actually said in this issue, but there's translation issues because I live in Argentina and these are translated from Spanish. The thing is, Space Dude was working with Howard Stark, Tony Stark's father. He's, so Tony, uh, sorry, Tony, Howard and Nick join forces. Nick is gonna become the new protector of Earth. And later on, it's mentioned that he's also, he's, he's working with S.H.I.E.L.D. That literally, like, four days a week, he does S.H.I.E.L.D. The other three, he's protecting the planet. Killing, going on these assassination missions of aliens and monsters and stuff like that. But the thing is, this sort of puts Nick Fury, I was about to say Nicolas Cage again. Nick Fury in this very moral, morally gray area where he stops, like, he, from protecting Earth and reacting to the situation, he starts to take a proactive um, stance. He starts going on assassinations and killing proactively aliens or demons or whoever is going to try to go get to Earth. So he attacks first. So I remember when I read this first for the first time, I thought to myself, boy, t uh, Tony, uh, Nick Fury has a lot on his plate, man. He was the dude was really, really busy all the time. But it's like sort of revealed that he used a ton of LMDs. He was like multitasking with the L uh, the life the model decoys while he was doing all the dirty work, the 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 real McCoy. So what happens is every time he goes on one of these missions, like there these are are very important, very relevant, and he notices that he's starting to call the attention of the Watcher, as we mentioned previous in the previous video on the subject. The Watcher was killed, he was assassinated, and some insult gross, someone took out his eyes, because his eyes, you can actually access the information. The bad guy behind this is this dude called Midas or Midas. He's a very interesting villain. Like, it's a shame, like, I've seen him here in, and in the uh, Marvel Boy miniseries, and outside of that, never again. Uh, so put in the comments below if this villain pops up in any other story with Exterminatrix, with his daughter. So, as we saw in the previous video, too, Midas joins forces with this very obscure villain called Orb. They want to go to the Watcher's base. Uh, Midas wants to steal anything worth of value and weapons from uh, the Watcher. And Orb basically wants to steal one of his eyes. What we discover is uh, Nick Fury, when he arrives, because he was also spying on the Watcher, he finds he, he lost one of his eyes. It seems that the Watcher was just tired of living and forces Nick Fury to kill him. And Nick Fury, for some reason, after that, he takes one of his eyes because, due to the nature of Fury, the guy that works in intelligence, he realizes this, that his eyes are a very important asset and it's going to help him protect Earth. So basically, Earth's heroes want to take down Nick Fury. They want to capture Orb. They want to stop Midas, too. Nick Fury wants to get his hands on both eyes. He wants to become. Uh, vir virtually omnipresent and he's going to use th that information for his own ends and obviously Earth's heroes are not going to have it so as I said before this story 
there's a lot to unpack. It's very confusing, especially when I'm telling the story. These eyes always gross me out. But what happens is in the battle against Nick Fury, he gives our heroes a run for their money. He actually whispers something in Thor's ear that makes Thor unworthy and he can't pick up Mjolnir anymore. So that's like a pretty relevant thing. Also, during the story, Thor discovers that he has a sister, that's Angela. Um, Hulk discovers that Tony Stark was the one um, had a hand in the whole, ex uh, the ex whole experiment with the Gavin bomb that went wrong and led him to become Hulk. I'm trying to think about other secrets that re were revealed in the story that had a pretty big impact. Also, Nick Fury is going to be out of the picture after this. Um, he's going to be replaced with his son which is the Samuel L. Jackson Nick Fury. Uh, so that's a good way to get him out of the picture and introduce the new version of Nick Fury. So, as I said before, this story is really worth, worth the read. It has a very interesting mix of characters. The art is also fantastic. After this, also, Winter Soldier, for a time, he's going to become, like, the protector of Earth and do this assassination. Uh, assassinate, assassinate any alien that tries to get close to earth and cause trouble. So I'm gonna leave this video here. Hope you guys liked it. See you guys next time. Bye.